Hello, we're Joe and Sharon Dillette. We've been volunteers with the Red Cross for about four years. And we're primarily working uh, with disaster services. You're familiar with the Red Cross, our uh, uh, work with the military and blood uh, donations. And uh, there's disaster services, which we volunteer for. And also, this is disaster preparedness. So we're going to talk to you about disaster preparedness, how to be informed, and making a plan making a kit. So being informed, you're familiar with the uh, tornado sirens that go off and uh, find out in your neighborhood uh, how you're going to be, uh, if you have to evacuate, how you're going to be informed. And uh, then when you're making a plan, make a plan for fire, for tornado, earthquake. Uh, so uh, for Tornado, you want to stay in your house in the basement or on the first floor in a well supported room like a bathroom. Uh, and if you have to evacuate for a fire where you're going to be meeting outside, uh, two exits out of every room of your house. So have the plan, work on that plan with your family. What we're going to talk about is the kit. When we work disaster services, people come and show up at a uh, shelter and they haven't got anything. They didn't make a kit, they have lost all their papers, assuming that they can't go back to their house. How are you going to survive the 72 hours? So this is our kit. Sharon's going to talk about that. Also the kit that you get from the Red Cross. This is our kit that we put together that is just pertinent for us and our family. Your kit may be different and it may be the same. What your kit should contain is three gallons of water per person per day. That means for the 72 hours. The food process you will go through is either stuff that you will get from the grocery store or you can buy these MREs online, which is what our military use and it will last for years. If you buy from the store, you will have to look at the shelf life and be sure and check it every few months to make sure that the food hasn't gone bad. Um, another thing we need is flashlights and batteries. LED, LED lights are best. Maybe one that goes on your head, one that can go in your hand. Make sure your batteries are kept up to date and that they're fresh. Don't use candles, even if you're in your own home. Battery-powered battery radio. Yeah, this radio is a Red Cross radio. Uh, it has a solar charging system. It also charges by a hand crank. So if your batteries run out, uh, another nice thing about this radio, it has a plug on the back USB port. You can charge your phone. And uh, it also has an emergency light has the weather band station and the emergency radios that helps you stay informed. And a reminder of the amount of water that you would have to carry if you were leaving home or in a disaster would be astronomical if you have four or five people in your family. So in place of that, Joe has found this straw. It's called Life Straw. You can find it online by doing a Google. It's under $20, and uh, it will filter the water. You can put this into a stream, uh, any kind of uh, water that is not uh, fit to drink will filter through the straw. So uh, it has a cap on either end. You suck it like a straw. There is no chemicals in here, and there's no moving parts. It will filter out about 700 gallons of water. And it will filter everything but the salt, if it was in salt water. Um, as far as tools go, have a few in your kit. You may choose differently. Um, emergency sheeting, which if you use the blanket, um, you could use the foil blanket, which is very thin, and use that as sheeting. Hammers, nails, pliers, screwdrivers, hatchet, whatever else you think you'll need. Clothing, if you have sleeping bags, it will be less than if you take everything else. Clothing, just make sure your clothing you can do in layers so that you can either keep cool 
or if it be winter, you can keep yourself warm. They also have these warming packets. Uh, prescriptions, don't forget prescriptions. Keep um, a list of prescriptions. Maybe that's what we did with the doctor's card on it, Joe's doctor's card on it. Everything that you will need, even if it's for your pets, your children, your babies, they will all need that. Maybe the pharmacist number and the doctor's number. Pet supplies, don't forget your pets. Have a leash in case you're out amongst the people, but even if your pet isn't used to a leash. Uh, cash and coins, you may never think that you would need cash, but think of everything going out. You won't, the electricity would be out, you won't be able to use cash cards, you won't be able to go to the gas station, the bank. Have at least enough money that you can get fill up your car with gas. Um, sanitary supplies, if you want to take toilet tissue, um, Germex to kill the germs, um, a mask to uh, keep out different elements. It all depends on what the disaster is and where you live. We live close to the uh, railroad, so there could be a contamination product in the oil. If you live close to water, if you live close to the airport, there could be so many different types of contaminants that you would have to keep yourself safe from. <clears throat> Important papers. If you were in a disaster and you had some of your family and the person who takes care of everything seems to get hit in the head or disabled in some way, have something there so that the kids or someone coming upon you will know who you are and where to contact your family and friends if they're away. Uh, we put copies of our passports in here, copies of our license, social securities, um, everything that a person might need, Medicare cards, anything you might need to answer questions if someone comes upon you and, and wants to help you. To prevent identity theft, black out all your banking information, credit card numbers, social security numbers, in case you get separated from your kit, you don't want your identity stolen. Remember if you have anybody handicapped or special in your family that may need a walker, a wheelchair, whatever, keep it close to the door or where you can get out. If you wear glasses, contacts, have an old pair, keep that also in there in case that some might get broke or lost. The uh, Red Cross has got, uh, go to redcross.org, there's more information on preparedness. There is also a store where you can buy the supplies. In your kits, you have, uh, for the preparedness supplies, there is some small kits that you can put in your car. I recommend for every car you have, you have a kit. Uh, you buy this kit, and uh, in here is included your first aid kit, your blankets, your heaters, uh, everything that's needed for your emergency in the car. Even a poncho in case it rains or you get out in the cold. The other thing is in an emergency, you get separated from your family. Uh, you uh, can go to a site, it's a national site called Safe and Well, maintained by the Red Cross. You can go on that site and register in the case of an emergency, kind of register so your family knows where you are. It's called Safe and Well. If you search that on Google, you will find it. And if you have a family member that is involved in an emergency, you can also go on there to see if they registered for the Safe and Well site. Don't forget about Facebook and your Facebook friends too. Go uh, and, and tell them that you're okay on Facebook. There's also, locally, there is a, uh, in the greater Chicagoland area, we have a patient connection site. So if you uh, want to see if there's uh, one of your relatives or friends are in a uh, hospital, you can go to the patient connection site also. Know your emergency calls, the people you would call in your area, in your town. Small town, you may know them right off the top, but in a large town, you may have to make several calls to find out those emergency people and the emergency numbers. These smartphones have an app available. Uh, it's a free app from the Red Cross. 
to keep track of weather and uh, it localized right in your area so alerts come through on that app for tornadoes and that. It also will locate shelters for you. So that's a free app. You can go to your app store and download it or go to redcross.org and download it from there. That about covers it with the kit. Uh, the kit should last you for like 72 hours in the case of an emergency. And uh, the things we don't have on the table is all the bottles of water and so forth. So uh, Put this in a spot in your home where you could reach it when you're leaving. If you're exiting uh, by one of the doors in, in a closet or behind a chair or whatever. So that it's easy to grab that you don't have to search around to find it. Think of all the things that you would be really lost without if you lost your home. You only had a minute or so to get out of your house, something to grab on the way out. And those are the things that should go into your kit. What do you need to survive for 72 hours?